Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and hello from in front of the camera. I still don't know how to do this, because I don't go in front of the camera very often, unless it's for a joke. So I've recently finished making a game on YouTube in an episodic format, a tower defense game made in Game Maker Studio 2. If, you've, uh, if you're watching this video, you probably don't need to hear me describe it once again. So on the whole, I'd say the project went pretty well, not only in terms of the uh, the game's actual development, but also in terms of posting each and every one of those videos on YouTube. I will talk more about that later. Uh, for those of you who don't know, postmortems and game design are once a project is finished and in the books, uh, you uh, you sort of regroup yourself, you collect your thoughts on on how things went, good, bad, and otherwise. And uh, that's what this, this video here is going to be about. So I'm not just going to be ad-libbing this whole video. I did go write down some notes, uh, both during during the actual project itself and also afterwards on, on how I think things went. So, uh, so that this can hopefully be a little bit on the organized side. Ah yes, Tower Defense Postmortem. The first thing that I wrote in all caps letters is plan more in advance next time. In case you think I'm joking. So I'm sure that pretty much all of you could have seen this coming, that just making stuff up as I went along was not going to be the optimal way to make a game. Uh, the initial thought process that led to that was that, and in quotes, I wanted to show the decision-making process behind each of the, the decisions that were made over the course of the game. I am not 100% sure how that turned into. I'm just going to completely wing it and make it up as I go along. This is one of those things that should have been painfully obvious to literally everyone watching this. There should have been something along the lines of an episode zero where I uh, either plan ahead of time or work out on the spot um, exactly what I'm going to be working on, in what order, when things need to be done before other things, and um, what's another big one? Maybe just a little tiny bit of thinking about how these systems are actually going to be implemented. So I mentioned some of the stats on the uh, the video production a minute ago, and uh, again, 64 videos in length, a total running time of about 52 hours. And um, just from a bit of back of the envelope uh, math, I, I do estimate that this probably could have been shortened by 5 to 10 videos, and uh, a number of hours if I had actually done some of that planning ahead of time that I, that I mentioned. Because there were a number of instances, not too many, I wasn't like constantly in a state of this whole project is on fire, but there were a handful of instances where I had to go back and change things that I'd already done, or in some cases some a lot of work that I did in the beginning didn't end up being in the final game, because again I wasn't really thinking that through, and um, just for the sake of both making this easier to produce and probably for people watching this making it easier to watch and not having to sit through me banging my head against the keyboard for stuff that wasn't even going to be in the finished game, um, it would have been nice to not have some of the, like, the original collision system, I think, was, uh, was a big thing that I, I spent a lot of time working on and in the end had to get rid of almost entirely in favor of something else because I didn't think it through. And then, of course, if, uh, if for the sake of argument we wanted to say that this series could have been shortened by about maybe five hours or so, five to seven hours, and um, in terms of videos that probably would have been about seven or eight videos, uh, the extra time could have been taken to either finish a couple weeks earlier than I did and maybe move on to other things, or the extra time could have been used to implement some things that uh, ended up getting cut, ended up getting left on the cutting room floor that would have actually uh, maybe contributed towards making the game actually better. I, um, I initially thought about a couple other towers, a couple other tower types that I wanted to have in that did not end up going in the game. I, I initially thought about some fun things like uh, achievement systems or... Uh, persistent upgrades between levels, that sort of thing, that did not end up in the final game. And um, if, I'd, if I'd had the main part of the game done back in, say, October, then there might have been time to do uh, one or more of those other things. Okay, I have like five or six pages of notes here. I've written down a lot of notes. Okay, so as for production of the actual game, um, if you go back in time a little bit to the uh, the beginning of July, the end of June in 2020, when I first started doing this, um, that was a year and a half ago. Game Maker Studio 2.3 had just come out in beta. It wouldn't be out in its stable release form for another two months after that. And since it was so new, this project was, at least one of the motivations for this project, I might say, was to play with a, a number of the new systems that Game Maker Studio 2.3 brought us. 
uh, in particular uh, structs and methods. And uh, you may have noticed that I spent a lot of time avoiding some of the built-in game maker systems, such as uh, most notably objects and objects events. And for the most part, the game entirely ran within one object, and I, I essentially created my own like update and render loop within that one object. I think now that it's a year and a half later and I've made a complete game using those systems, uh, it's safe to say that that experiment was not a success. If I were to make another game, I would not do that. But uh, with all that said, I do think it was worth doing the experiment in the first place because it did give me a really good feeling at what structs and methods are good for and what the built-in game maker systems are good for and um, going forward how to, uh, how to balance the two. Again, to say this in terms of work that I probably did that probably could have been avoided doing, if I just let GameMaker handle its regular step um, step event loop and its uh, render loop, I probably could have saved maybe not an entire video. It's hard to say because that wrangling the the render method that I that I spun myself um, had ripple effects in a lot of places, and it's hard to it's hard to really make an estimate of how. how much time I wasted by doing that. Strictly speaking, uh, you might also point out that if I just let GameMaker handle its uh, step and render loops that the game might have performed a little bit better, but in all honesty, uh, in terms of the problems that the game had, uh, performance I do not think was one of them. Uh, the game is very much not CPU bound and I was able to get it running at uh, really acceptable frame rates on uh, some not very, not very powerful computer hardware, so I consider that a, a pretty uh, solid win. Uh, the last major thing that I would say did not go well at all, and again, I have I have just in my, my notebook here written in all caps MUSIC. Uh, I should have tried to get the music sorted for this game uh, months, really, or at least at the very least weeks, uh, preferably months before I did. Um, I did not, as it turned out, end up actually uh, shooting a message to the musician friend until I want to say middle of November, and by that time he already had a bunch of work that was backed up and he was not able to get to it immediately and as a result the game embarrassingly had to um let's say ship without any music i will be updating that in as soon as i get the chance but um yeah next time uh safe to say the next time i try to make a game i will definitely try to get that sorted much much earlier than i did uh because uh it's not like it's not like the game was fundamentally broken without music playing in the background but it is it is uh, somewhat embarrassing to uh to have to have screwed up something that one would think would be on the easy side of, uh, of game development. Okay, so that's it for the fun stuff. Uh, stuff that went right, on the other hand, I think there were a number of things that I think went pretty well. Um, first and foremost, actually finishing a 3D game in Game Maker, which not something that you get to say very often. I've been running that joke into the ground a lot over the last couple weeks. Um, specific things, I, I actually like how the user interface development went for, um, for the game. I like the UI system that I came up with. Uh, UI is something that is normally a considerable pain in the neck, especially when it comes to, like, anchoring it to different parts of the screen, because, uh, Game Maker does not currently, as of my recording this, have any built-in systems to do that. Yo-Yo Games has talked about adding a UI system to Game Maker, but I don't believe that's, that's going to be coming for at least a couple months, if not years. Um... And uh, in the interim, I do like the uh, the system that I that I ended up uh, coming up with for uh, for Bombardier, and I will be probably doing something very similar for future games. Um, let's see, I think I I think I had some other comments about the user interface in here. Yeah, I would I would add probably some modifications to the UI system if I were to to do something similar in another game, such as um, making it easier to animate UI elements. Um, I know that sequences are a thing in Game Maker that a number of things that a number of people rather have used for user interface stuff. Um, it would really be in my best interest to learn how that works because it's still almost two years out since I started playing with 2.3 now, and I still have no idea how sequences work. Really should get on that. Um, that is a, that is definitely a tool for user interface animation that, as I mentioned, a lot of people have uh, have made use of. Um, other things, the editor was a lot of fun to make. It did, of course take a considerable amount of time. I don't know exactly how many of the 52 hours were devoted to, to making the editor, but um, I think it came out pretty well in the end. And I had fun doing it, and um, it definitely allowed me to do some things that the built-in Game Maker Room Editor would, um, would probably have made very, very difficult. 
Uh, particularly the terrain tool. I had fun making the terrain tool, and um, especially that was, I want to say that was banged out in like 20 minutes. I'm definitely happy that I was able to write a terrain tool in 20 minutes. Again, it's definitely, that was like my fifth time writing a terrain editor, but uh, still. Alright, some other notes. Um, I wanted to put less emphasis on the temporary stuff. I did end up spending a lot more time than I really wanted to on programmer art things, be that like designing the foes or the towers, programmer art, or um, like programmer art visual effects, like when you selected a tower and it glowed red or green or blue or whatever the color was. Um, I would definitely have rather just spend a lot less time uh, writing that glowing shader code, uh, knowing that I would be replacing the like selection indication with something else later on. Um, that, that was also another considerable waste of time that could have been cut out. Um, let's see, I, I sort of mentioned this before, but I want to I wanna be more careful about designing the game system so that they're not like tripping over each other and um, so that I don't have to spend a great deal of time rewriting stuff later on. Again, that was probably, if I had to name the biggest waste of time that I did in this entire um, year and a half series, it would probably be like ripping out the collision system and trying to replace it with something else. Uh, not only because it took a lot of time to do the first time, but it also took even more time the second time because I had to like undo some of the mistakes that I'd made. But all right, that's fine. Um, okay, and this is something that uh, you, you have a little bit more flexibility as, as an indie dev than you would in something like the AAA space. But um, settling on an art style before I started production probably would not have hurt. I sort of assumed that I would be going with some sort of low-poly 3D aesthetic because that's like what Game Maker is good at when it comes to 3D, but I, I didn't really sit down and think it through and establish it early on the way that I probably should have. Um, next time I definitely want to be a little bit upfront about that, although if I were to uh, uh, say a little bit about my future plans, I have actually already started recording another, uh, another Let's Make a Game series because I wanted to, um, I actually wanted to um, in implement some of these, some of these changes with like project management and um, spend a little bit of time working on that so that I maybe had a little bit more t to talk about during this postmortem. And um, let's just say that I screw that up within like two videos of the start. Again, it's not the worst gaff I could make, but um, it's one of those, one of those little things that would, that it would be nice if I didn't have to, didn't have to continuously worry about messing up or whatever. Um, let's see. I have no idea what this says. I know I was like half asleep when I wrote this last night. Let's talk about video production. So, uh, right off the bat, in terms of how the, uh, the Let's Make a Game videos have performed on YouTube, uh, they've done really well. A lot better than I actually expected them to. So what you see on screen right now is uh, the numbers of how how the uh, the series as a whole has performed as of my as of my editing this video. Uh, for the most part, every episode pulled in about a hundred views. Some of the early ones did better than that. Some of the later ones did a little bit less than that. But it was actually really consistent how many uh, views each of these videos got throughout the course of this year and a half project, uh, which is definitely more than I expected. I expected a much sharper drop-off in terms of uh, retention because that is typically what you see when you do, do things such as Let's Plays or even uh, some of the other game dev series that I've that I've been posting, such as uh, 3D Collisions. There has definitely been a steady drop-off in um, who's watching 14 weeks in versus who is watching the first video. Also, speaking of audience retention, uh, the, uh, the average watch time on each video was actually quite high. I want to say it was like four and a half, maybe even five minutes. Some of them were even longer than that. Uh, which is definitely on the high end. Uh, for what it's worth, these um, these videos do tend to be longer than the ones that I usually post, especially towards the end, which means that if just a couple people watch it all the way through, that is going to add a significant number of a uh, number of total minutes to the watch time, which is going to push the average up a little bit more so than a video that's only like 14 minutes long. Um, I don't really I don't know how much you want me to read into those numbers, but um, I'm definitely glad that a lot of people thought it was interesting enough to watch for on average four and a half, five, whatever I said, minutes. Um, again, the, uh, the screenshot of the uh, YouTube analytics will show the exact, uh, the exact numbers. Some of you may remember a long, long time ago, back in, I want to say, like the 2017, maybe 2018 days, I actually did a, uh, or I should say attempted to do another Let's Make a Game Tower Defense, uh, which was in 2D, and it didn't last very long. I got distracted and sidetracked and bored and whatever after probably, I want to say, 10 videos. Um, 
Those videos actually performed weirdly well in terms of views, considering that I kind of didn't do anything with it, and I kind of didn't, like, do much to advertise them to people and make them watch it or anything like that. And at the time, I definitely had a much smaller audience. Um, but at the same time, the, uh, the average view duration for those videos, I believe, was uh, actually really low. I want to say that was like a minute and change for those videos. I'll have the analytics for that on screen as well. Um, they've been around for much longer. They've been around for a, a number of years before I started doing this one, which is obviously going to inflate the view count a little bit. But um, I guess in a couple of years, I could compare the, uh, the performance of these videos at like the four year mark or whatever to the performance of those videos at like the four year mark or whatever and uh, see who comes out on top. Uh, and this conclusion probably has been all but said already, but I definitely want to do let's more let's make a game series after this. Um, like I said, I've started working on another one so that I could uh, try out some some different project management uh, strategies uh, before I went into talking about this this postmortem here. When that's going to start going up, I, I definitely need a bit of a break. I'm probably going to start posting those around like March or maybe April of next year, and uh, I do want to make some changes to the way that that goes. Um, I want to make the videos a little bit shorter so that they're like one, easier to edit, two, hopefully easier to watch, uh, three, maybe a little bit more organized because um, at the beginning of this series especially I just kind of wrote code until like the recording timer hit like 25 minutes and then stopped and then whatever didn't get done just carried over to the next video and I definitely want to focus more on individual tasks uh, going forward. Towards the end, it's probably a little bit on the natural side for the video duration to get a little bit longer because um, as there's more like miscellaneous bugs to fix and I don't want to spend like five videos just fixing bugs and as the problems that emerge get more complicated, uh, they might just take longer to fix. Um, you did see that a little bit in this uh, bombardier. Uh, towards the end, the videos tended to be like an hour plus. Uh, whereas at the beginning, they were more in the 20 minute, 30 minute range. But I do want to try to keep things under 30 minutes, uh, ideally under like 25 minutes in the, f in the future if I can. Uh, lastly... Oh, yeah, this is a minor thing. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to use something besides these like generic thumbnail templates for the video thumbnails because I do think that having something a little bit more uh, concrete in the thumbnail instead of just like week 47 or whatever, will entice more people to click on them. But on the other hand, especially at the beginning when there's like a higher rate of onboarding people onto watching the series, uh, there's not a lot to look at in the game. There's a lot of programmer art, there's a lot of code, and there's like not much else. So I don't know, I might not do that. I might just do the like template thumbnails like week one, week two, week three, so on and so forth. Um, towards the end, I might try and be a little bit more creative, but we'll see. Anyway, that's all that I've, uh, that's all the notes that I've collected on my thoughts for making this, uh, making this series. I do want to do this again. I think I've said that like three times now. Other non Let's Make a Game stuff that's coming, I, um, I'm of course still working on 3D Collisions in Game Maker as well as a couple other, um, weird arcane, often 3D things in Game Maker. And uh, I'm still doing a bunch of Let's Plays on the side because there is a, oh my god, why does Bravely Default 2 have to be so long? I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I think Bravely Default 2 might actually be too long. I'm, I'm like 80 hours into the recording and I don't think I'm anywhere close to the end. So that's it. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Uh, I hope you all found this extremely interesting. If you want to see the, um, the series from the beginning, I will have a link to the playlist in the video description. I will have a link to the itch.io page where you can play the finished product in the video description. Um, I hope you all found this extremely interesting and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Edward Holt, Posho, Emily Coyo, Tusk, Sindra Larson, Gunnar Clovis, Square Crow, and Azarel Studios for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.